Hello and welcome to worship on this, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. We're so glad you've joined us today. I'm Pastor Stephanie Kirshner from Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Manchester, Connecticut. Welcome. Hi, this is Steve Lazarus. I'm with the Church Council, and I wanted to take a couple of minutes and thank everyone who was able to join us for last week at weekend's uh, coffee hour. We had a great discussion and we had uh, a lot of feedback that we received from membership and um, even in the many council members they were able to attend the coffee hour, hour as well and we were able to talk about the process by which we're going to move towards reopening our physical church building uh, over the next couple of months. So, you know, and we also talked about the reopening committee that's working very hard. Uh, that's made up of, you know, all the various members. And I be believe that list of those members' names has been, um, uh, was included in this Friday's um, update. Um, also, I wanted to sort of mention that last Friday, um, last Friday's update, somebody had mentioned that, you know, they, didn't, they had not seen the letter that came out from the council or they had not seen the uh, letter that had come out from our parish nurse, Lynn Gustafson. So I would like to encourage everyone, if they still have it, to go back into your emails, look at the Friday update from last weekend, and see those links about halfway down the page. Uh, you'll see the two, le the two letters or notifications, whatever you want to talk, call them, from the council and also from the parish nurse, because I think there's a lot of information in there that might be helpful to you. Also, um, as we move forward, uh, please keep the uh, reopening committee in your prayers. Uh, I, you know their names are in this Friday's update, and uh, you know they're going to be working through lots of lots of information that's out there. Um, it's not you know something that's not manageable, but we do appreciate their hard work and getting putting it all together because there's a lot of information out there. And they also want to thank everybody who contacted the various council members after the um, uh, our coffee hour last week and uh, you know, shared their thoughts with us. We sincerely appreciate it. With that, um, I thank you again, and God bless you all, and also God bless our beautiful country. I hope you're having a great uh, holiday weekend and a safe one.
Worship in the name of the creator who creates time and space, galaxies and stars and planets. Alleluia. Amen. We worship in the name of Jesus Christ, born in flesh on earth. Alleluia. Amen. We worship in the name of the Spirit who fills earth with her presence. Alleluia. Amen. Gracious God, pour your Spirit into our hearts that we would worship today with all our hearts, that our lives would be transformed by your power, and that we would carry your joy, mercy, and love into all the world. To you we give our honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Alleluia. Amen. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel text from Matthew comes just after we read about John the Baptist being imprisoned. John had sent his own disciples to Jesus to ask if he is the one for whom they have been waiting. Because even for John, the preparer of the way, Jesus ushering in the kingdom, the reign of God, is not quite what anyone had expected. 
Jesus is not a great military or political leader. He speaks and acts differently than any person of power they've ever known and experienced before. This king, this Messiah, this reign is different. It looks different, it sounds different, it feels different. Jesus notes that this generation does not know what to make of either John or Jesus. Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. When then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. John was an ascetic, someone who lives a very simple life and abstains from many of life's pleasures for, re- pleasures for religious reasons. Many ascetics often practice extreme self-denial. John expressed this in his preaching about repentance and baptism. And Jesus, on the other hand, Jesus loved to enjoy the abundant life God gives, the blessings of forgiveness and grace and love and so much more. In the text, Jesus goes on to compare those of his day to, the one, to those who pout because they don't get what they expect. He was not what they expected. He says, but to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. John and Jesus are not expected. Their lifestyles, their teaching, their preaching, their actions that point to God and, many, uh, and the many dimensions of who God is and what God does, none of that is expected. None of it is normal or common. And then we get to the somewhat mystifying words Jesus speaks about hidden and revealed things. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In my reading and preparation for today's sermon, I came across some spiritual reflections that resonated with me and offered a fuller understanding of the words of Jesus in this passage. First, Father Ron Rollheiser of the Oblate School of Theology in Texas, he says that intelligence is a gift from God that we need to give thanks for and use. Naivete is not called for here. But he says that sometimes in our intellectual pursuits, we can become arrogant or we feel we are able to handle all things by ourselves. Father Rollheiser writes, When we are the learned and the clever, 
We can more easily forget that we need others and consequently don't as naturally reach for another's hand as does a child. It's easier for us to isolate ourselves. He goes on to say, faith does not ask us to not stretch our minds. Faith not only doesn't fear the hard questions, it invites us to ask them. The depths of infinity are never threatened by finite intelligence. The task is to become post-sophisticated, that is, to remain full of intelligence and learning, even as we put on again the mindset of a child. The theologian professor Eleanor Stump of of St. Louis University writes about the final sentences of Matthew's chapter, chapter 11. The portion about taking on the yoke of Jesus. She states, to see why Christ's saying really is true after all, Consider the condition Christ sets for getting the gift he offers of an easy yoke and a light burden. Come to me, he says. To come to someone is to let that person come into you, come into your presence. It is to be open to him, to let his will make a difference to what you yourself and your own will what you do. It isn't safe, generally speaking. But when the person to whom you come is Christ himself, the vulnerability which openness brings with it is more than matched by the love Christ gives. In the gift of that love, everything that might be lost is turned into gift given and gift received to be returned again in love. After contemplating all of this and and with much prayer, I reflected on St. Paul, which his words are not often my favorite, but the words from the epistle assigned for today spoke to me. It is here where we hear overtones of both John the Baptist and Jesus. Paul writes to the followers of Christ in Rome, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh, I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul is bemoaning the fact that he is a sinner. I know what I am supposed to do, and I don't do it. I know what I should not do, and I go right ahead and do that. It is not I who do it, but sin that is in me. I am captive to sin. He states this argument in several different ways and then almost in desperation says, wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the argument, the argument of the intelligent ones. 
We know as those loved and claimed by God that we are called to do in grateful response to that love is to love God back. To love God back most of all by loving others. And yet because of sin, we often don't live up to that call. We try harder and harder, but we find ourselves more and more frustrated and disappointed with ourselves. Our intelligent mind does mental gymnastics trying to explain why we act the way we do. When this happens to us, in humility, we can begin to live into the lessons from St. Paul, the lessons Jesus offers us, that the kingdom of God The reign Jesus ushers in is one of unconditional love from him, centered on his forgiveness of us, centered on that gift of grace, not force of power, but gentle and powerful love. This doesn't always make sense to our intelligent minds that we must receive it as a gift from him, He calls us to accept that gift, having faith like a child. We can move from the argument of St. Paul about that wretched person that I am because we cannot keep from sinning to the word of praise that Paul offers us. Who will rescue me from myself? Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. We can understand the words of Professor Stump that taking on the easy yoke and light burden of Jesus means letting him come into our presence. That we can be vulnerable to allow that forgiving, grace-filled, life-saving presence. This relationship with Jesus and with each other is not about a struggle where we try harder and harder and harder. It is a surrender. A surrender into the arms of the one who loves us in spite of ourselves. This is what Martin Luther experienced when he had the revelation that we are saved not by our own works or worth, but by the unconditional grace of a loving God given to us. In Jesus Christ. And for the world, this makes no sense. No sense at all. But if we are able to have the eyes of a faith of a child, it makes perfect sense. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray for the church around the globe, where communities are assembling for worship, protect them from viral infection. Where communities are worshiping with print and screen, grant them steadfastness in your word. Strengthen those believers who doubt your goodness. Bless pastors, deacons, and committee members as they serve our congregations in this difficult time. O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the well-being of creation. Grant renewal to the air, the waters, and the lands. Save the animals whose natural habitat is threatened by climate change or human carelessness, and direct us toward sustainable living. Preserve the fields of Kenya from locusts. Nourish our country's green spaces. O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations. Keep the world from war. Pave the way for just elections. Protect citizens from the designs of autocratic rulers. Uphold our courts. Guide our national and state governments in finding ways to redress the wrongs of racism and to ensure equality for all. O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and suffering. Console the fearful, feed the hungry, house the homeless, shelter the runaways. Heal the many who are newly afflicted with the coronavirus and guide researchers in discovering a vaccine. Visit the sick whom we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for infants and young children, that they be carefully tended. We pray for teens, that they keep patients throughout the contagion. We pray for school boards, that they find solutions for the fall semester. We pray for the unemployed, that they find jobs. We pray for medical workers, that they remain healthy. We pray for the aged, especially those in care facilities, that they find companionship in your presence. O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We pray finally for ourselves, Show us that the yoke of faith is easy. May we find our rest in you. Hear now our private prayers. O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Comfort all who mourn their dead. And at the end, bring us and all your people into your eternal rest. O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, for the sake of him who bore the heavy yoke for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Oh
Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope. And deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. <laughs> 